Welcome back everybody, you guys have been absolutely killing it with this series and because of that we're just going to keep grinding it out for you. Last week we went over the center defense and mid position and this week we're going to tweak it ever so slightly and go over the center mid position. Without wasting any time, let's get right into it. Our number one box to box midfielder has got to go to Big Mac, Weston McKinney. Weston has been so goddamn good as of late with Juventus. He's already solidified himself into that Juve lineup and has already shown he's one of the best midfielders in the whole entire league. At one point people were saying he wouldn't even cut it at Southampton, but looking back, boy were those people wrong. He's defied every single expectation. He already has 3 goals and 2 assists in 18 games and his stats could even be better if Maratha could actually finish off his chances. Weston is a true number 8. I've never seen a player work as hard as he has. He has the cardio to run up and down the pitch for days, and his technical ability is definitely there. I really have nothing bad to say about him. He's good at just about everything, especially the defensive side of the game. His tackling and aerial ability is the best in the biz. If he really wanted to, I guarantee he could play center back as well. And may I add, right now Weston is not only the best center mid option for the US, but he is the best player for the US. His form is unmatched currently, and if he continues to find more and more confidence, soon Ronaldo will be the second best player on that Juve squad, right behind McKinney. Next up, we got Dwayne Holmes of Huddersfield Town. Dwayne was born in Georgia and grew up there until age 4, making him eligible to play for the red, white, and blue. At only 26 years old, Dwayne still has loads to offer to the US men's national team. It really is a shame that Burhalter doesn't call him out more often because he's a fantastic player. Dwayne has worked his way up the English ladder. Starting off in the Football League 2, he now finds himself in the English Championship, one step away from the EPL. Dwayne's biggest strength is his dribbling. He doesn't necessarily have amazing 1v1 ability, but what he does have is the ability to dribble into open space. Whereas other players are timid of moving forward, he's not. Dwayne could definitely be used in a counter-attack style. His quickness and tackling ability is made for such a style. One weakness though is his aerial ability. He's only 5'6", so on corner kicks or set pieces, he is more or less a liability. Other than that though, he's got it all to at least see a look in that World Cup qualifying team. Brian Ko is the next man up. Brian may have the most potential out of any player on this list. At only 18 years of age, he still has so much time to grow into the player we all know he can become. Brian started his soccer career with DC United's Academy. There he shined a little bit more than the rest and moved to Wolfsburg when he turned 18 years old. With Wolfsburg, he's played with the second team and with the U19s. His strengths include his pace, athleticism, vision, and towering presence. He's like a younger Owen Atasawi with more potential. Crazy to think about it. Let's hope in the future Ko gets some time with Wolfsburg and links up with fellow US international John Brooks on that first team. And now, before going to the next player, we have reached our mandatory subscriber break. If you're not subscribed and you like our content, then please sub, it's free. A lot of people that watch our videos don't, so be the change and break that trend. Okay, now back to the video. Next up, we have a forgotten name that most haven't heard since the 2014 World Cup where he scored a hell of a goal, Julian Green. Make no mistake of it. Julian is very much still in the picture. At the age of only 25, Julian could still see a lot of time with the national team. After leaving an uneventful Bayern career where he barely saw minutes, he has revolutionized himself. With Firth in the second division, he has been their main man, their savior. Currently Firth is in fourth place in the second division. If they squeeze into the top three, then they have a very good chance to get promoted to the Bundesliga, all thanks to Julian Green. This season he has seven goals and two assists for Firth in the regular season and by many he is regarded as their best player. If Julian keeps up this incredible run of form, we will definitely see him in that US men's national team sweater. You know, it seems like all the best players are playing in Europe these days, but the MLS also has a lot of young, up and coming talent too. Some of them being Tanner Tessman, Andres Perea, Keenan Parks, Emerson Heidman, and Kellen Acosta. Out of all these players, Tanner Tessman definitely has the most upside. Tanner honed his skills with the FC Dallas Academy, and last season was promoted to the first team where he had a breakout season. He was a vital piece to Dallas' playoff run, which, as we all know, was upsettingly stopped short by the Seattle Sounders. But even though he couldn't get the cup, Tanner showed that he is the real deal. He is composed, freakishly calm with the ball, and can pick a pass from anywhere. His fantastic play was recently rewarded too, as he was called up to the US men's national team and played his first game with them against Trinidad and Tobago. Keep your eyes on this kid because one day he may be one of the best. Andres Pereira also had a somewhat breakout season last year and was called up to the US MNT recently as well and filed his one-time switch to permanently play with the States. 
Before MLS, Andres played in Colombia with Atletico Nacional. Here he gained some minutes and was transferred to Orlando City. In Orlando, he became a starter and put in his fair share of decent performances. His greatest strength, I would say, is his defensive contribution. He can tackle and defend very well. Going forward, though, he could use a little bit of work. His passing could be refined just a little bit. If he doesn't see time as a CM, we could definitely be seeing him slot into that CDM role. Keaton Parks is another player that has really impressed me as of late. Coming from an NYCFC fan, I can say straight up, he is one of the most underrated players in the whole entire league. Game in, game out, he has put on phenomenal performances with the boys in blue. His consistency is something to admire, as he almost never has a bad game. His passing, vision, and work rate is what makes him a standout player. The one thing though that he can improve on is his finishing. He might have had three goals last season, not too bad, but it could have been double if he could just finish his chances. I really hope Keating gets called up to the USMNT again, as he can definitely turn a few heads. Another player I want to see get more game time with the USMNT is Emerson Hyndman. After his amazing stint with Rangers in 2016-2017, it seems like many have forgotten about him. Yes, he is older now being 24, but he still has so much to offer. Emerson was one of Atlanta's best players last season, which on the real isn't really saying much as they suck, but he was one of the best. He scored two goals and an assist and contributed immensely on the offensive end. If he can improve his defense, then we could definitely see him reappear in that USMNT discussion. And finally, onto the last player of the video, and probably the least likely to make an impact with this team, Kellen Acosta. At one point, it seemed like Kellen was destined for a big club in Europe, and now it just seems like a thing of the past. When I see Acosta, I don't see a man that can make a big difference with this squad. Yes, he's good, but is he great? I don't think so. His passing, aerial ability, discipline, and tackling leaves much to be desired. You know, maybe he can prove me wrong, but at the time of making this video, I don't think he will. Well, if you enjoyed the sixth installment of US Men's National Team Breakdown, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, we have a shop with a lot of awesome designs. Your favorite team is probably on there. Go check it out. With that being said, we'll see you in the next one.